I would like to share an experience I had when I was first starting my search. I had thought I had found what I was looking for, and I really hadn't. At one time it may have been, but it had changed. And I was coming back to town where I live and had to stop for gas, and I pulled in to the gas station and it was full except for one slot that was empty and I pulled in there and behind in, in the at the pump behind me was this gentleman driving a car from probably late 60s early 70s and he was dressed kind of out of date hat, and his car was in perfect condition, and it was, I would say it was probably the kind of car, late 60s, early 70s, and what was so remarkable, when I looked around, there were a lot of men at the gas station, and, you know, here's a classic car in mint condition, and nobody was noticing. No one was paying any attention. And he was dressed the way I remembered my father dressing, you know, with a suit, a hat, and the brim of the hat was, you know, how they change. It was the size was worn back in the late 60s, early 70s. So it was the tie. And it was just like he was out of time, out of place. He did not really know how to use the gas pump. So he really wasn't pumping gas. He really, you know, he he didn't know how to use the modern gas pump. And I thought that was odd. But yet, it seemed right to me. I mean, this was an odd experience, but yet it just seemed right. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah, it does. <laughs> you know, and I felt like this was this was a message. You know, something came through. I was almost like I was removed. It's almost like I had moved into another another time zone. I had moved into like a, a time warp. And we were, there were like two times that were here at the same time. I was in one, he was in the other, but yet we were in the same place. And... No one noticed him. No one noticed him. This is what just blew my mind. He was filling his car, but he didn't have the pump actually in the gas tank. And I got out of the car, and he was looking at me. We made eye contact. The color of his eyes, as I remember, they were this blue but there was more to it. There was a light that was coming from his eyes. There was a light. There was a, a love that was coming. His whole, his whole countenance was one of light and love, gentleness, and his smile. Um, he had was a smile that just made you feel warm and loved and I felt I felt safe that may not make sense oh it makes sense then I said hello and he said hello and I looked around and nobody was noticing that we were having this conversation and he asked me, you know, basically how I was, and I said, I'm fine. And, and then he related that it was such a beautiful day, and he smiled at me, and I just had this feeling that he was there to share with me something because on the way I kept thinking about it and thinking about what I was looking for, and... I thought I was close. I wasn't. And 
he was so kind, and there was such a light and love coming from him. So we shared a couple more little words, and I finished filling my car, and I got in, and I drove off. He was still standing there pretending like he was pumping gas when I pulled away. <laughs> <laughs> and as I drove off and I turned out of the filling station, I looked back, and he was gone. The car was gone. Everything was gone. He was gone. Absolutely gone. And I checked. That car wasn't anywhere. It wasn't out in the road. It wasn't like behind me. It was just gone. And I knew then that that was a very special experience. And it took me a little while, and I realized that actually I had met Paul Twitchell. He was there encouraging me to continue seeking and that I was very close. So who is Paul Twitchell, his consciousness? Paul Twitchell was a Varden master. He has God consciousness. He is definitely a spiritual traveler, a guide for many people into the higher world. And what was meaningful to you that Paul Twitchell taught? Mm. The most meaningful thing was that our true self is soul. And we are not our body. And we are destined to return to the hooray, God, and become co-workers. And that probably resonated the most with me. It was, it made sense. It felt right. Well, you know, I think I also felt like I knew him, but probably from a long, long time ago. You know, not in this lifetime, but there was a familiar there was a sense of familiarity about his whole consciousness. And I think that's why I felt safe. It was like an old friend coming to point me in the right direction again. (laughs) (laughs) And, you know, it's like, well, I'll pay attention this time. So, yeah. Uh, You know, when I read things, like when I was reading the the Sherry Act, it's like some of it just seems so familiar. You know, it was like, it's just like it's, It's something that I I already knew. It was something familiar, and it all made such sense. The only thing I've ever read that made sense. And I got home, and uh, it was maybe a few weeks later, I pulled off one of his books that I had on the shelf, and I turned it over, and, of course, his picture was on the back. And, you know, it seemed like our eyes met, and his smile got a little bigger, and I thought, <laughs> it was you. It was you. I knew it was him, and that was a life-changing point. I mean, that kept me from getting discouraged, and it. when I went on Amazon and was looking, I think that he literally guided me to find Bart Ankar, no doubt. I had been on before, never came across it. So I think that it was like he was saying, okay, you're searching, you're, you haven't found it, so here it is. <laughs> you know, do with it what you will. <laughs> and I just knew. I just knew. And I have been so grateful ever since. I have been so grateful that I found it. I came across Alan G's book, and Barton Car. And I bought a couple of the books and I went on their website and I knew. I knew that was the place I had been seeking. It felt right. I knew it was the truth. And I did not hesitate to go ahead and join. And it has changed my life. I am 
I am becoming who I am supposed to be. It's been subtle. It hasn't always been easy. Patience. I've been learning patience. I've been learning detachment. It is easier. But I have a long ways to go. But I will never forget that experience. You know, Mm -hmm. these are experiences that when you have them, they seem so, they, they are real. But yet, it was not in the right time. And uh, that really, that really moved me. Uh, it's a beautiful experience. Yeah. It I, was a beautiful experience. Paul G. such and, a beautiful master. He's so sweet. Oh, <laughs> no, and the, it just, it literally flowed out of him. I felt at peace. I felt love. He just radiated all of that. And, you know, I didn't meet him when he was in his physical body. Uh, The timing was off, whatever. I wasn't ready. But having that experience, I can't imagine meeting him in life would have been much different, you know. It's so beautiful how the Master's love love the chilas so much some of the chilas have shared some experiences when they first found the path and it just sort of blows me away this love that the hure has and reaches down through the master (laughs) it's so kind of neat yeah 